work through it. So I'm just going to talk about it, okay? So kind of guide you through as to what it is that you need to look for. Okay? So for that first question, and these are all worth two marks, okay? So out of the two triangles, you should have started with this one on the right because you have two sides uh, given. So we're going to try to find this side here that is shared. And so we know that we're missing a leg. So you have to go hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. And of course, you need to square root it. So you show this step, and then it's supposed to be 1840. Okay. So you get a mark. You get a mark if you come up with 1840. Okay. Then we're moving over to that second triangle here. And there, x is our hypotenuse. So we're going to have to add these two legs, square and add them, right? So I, I need to see that y value being transferred over to your calculation. So it's this squared plus whatever you got earlier. So if you made a mistake here, you lose that mark. But you would still get the mark here if you're adding and squaring. You get that. And you get 2336. Okay. So another mark right there. So you get, if you get to this, to 2336 and everything is correct, you get two out of two there. All right. And let's try another example, which is similar, but, right, I need you to understand, I need to see you working through it. Okay. So here you start with the left triangle. Because two sides are given, you're missing a leg here. So similar to the one before, you take the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. Figure out what that is. Take the square root. Remember to always take the square root if you do it this way. Make sure at the end you take the square root. So you get one mark for that. And then you come over to that second triangle here. And you're missing a leg again. Again, okay, so leg and leg. So it's both of them should be subtracting, right? Hypotenuse subtracted the other leg. And I should see the transfer over to your calculation, right? That's the side that they're sharing. And you get 112.66. So you get another mark for getting that answer right. So, um, so far we're out of four. So basically just make that sure you write down a mark out of two for, for those. And then C is uh, those two triangles stacked, right? So the first triangle down here, because that gives you the most, just don't, don't think it's always going to be the bottom or always the right. Look at which one gives you the most information. So you're missing your hypotenuse here. So Y is going to be a result of the addition of the two legs, obviously always squaring them. And then it's 9.04, okay? And you do it again, right? You're missing the hypotenuse again, so that's 12.34 miles. And you basically, you're, it's the same calculation over and over. So you get one for 9.04, you get one for 12.34. Uh, yes, yes. Twenty-three thirty-six. Mm, you're talking about okay. Okay, so Isabel, sorry, I didn't read it right away. Uh, good question. So she's asking. Uh, it applies to all of them. Technically, uh, normally what we do is we round this one to four decimals or ideally use all the decimals, right? Because you're still not done answering the question, right? And you're transferred. But your final answer should always be two decimals, okay? I don't, I'm not gonna sweat it because we're COVID season here. There's certain things that I'm not gonna sweat it. Uh, I would like you to use four, but if you don't, that's fine. But the final answer should be two decimals, okay? That's almost across the board. I can't see of 
a time where I asked you for one decimal. It might have been a worksheet that does that, but I always ask for two. Okay, so we're here, we're out of six. Don't worry about rounding today though. Don't take any marks off for rounding today. Okay, I'm more interested in seeing whether or not you understand what's happening here. Backside, word problem. One mark for correct graph. So you should have identified that there's a right triangle. The one that's slanted or a hypotenuse is the ladder. It's 13, the base of the ladder, right? The base of the ladder, we talked about it in our notes, is, notes, is the bottom here. So it's 13.2 feet away from the wall. And then obviously this uh, vertical line is your wall. So we're looking for that side, how high up the wall is the top leaning against. So X or whatever you want to call it, A, B, C, Y, you name it. You're essentially asking for a leg, so you're going to have to subtract and uh, figure it out, and it's 15.03. Okay. You're welcome, Isabel. Okay. And then blast from the past. So that one was worth two marks, okay? Question two is worth two. One for the diagram, one for solving. What's that? Mm -hmm. Huh. So you sh are you showing me your work? Yeah. Okay, so you still get half. Sure. Because you're showing me your work, if something happens while you're typing it in, uh, that's why showing work is very important, okay? Sure. All right, so we're finding the, uh, we're doing a little bit of stuff we've done in the past, right? So asking for the discount in dollars, so you need to obviously convert that to a decimal divided by 100 essentially. And so you get 43.50. Half for the work, half for the final correct answer. Calculate the sale price after tax. So I would say if you subtract the discount right from the original and you get 101.50, you get one mark already. And then you get one more mark for figuring out the taxes, like for calculating the taxes. So, um, so I'm just wondering, so you got this exact number here? Yeah, I have a 1.38 so you figured out over here, you figure out the sale price essentially, like how much it would be after the discount. So you use that here. Okay, I see. So what you probably did is 145 times 0 0.70. Probably like that's what you would get if you if you went times 0.70, because you know how 70 and 30, right, adds up to 100 percent You figured out how much that person would pay after the discount. But if you're showing me this, you get half a mark here. So it's good that you got that right answer there. Okay, so one and one, so two marks for B, one mark for A. So question three is worth three marks in total. Question three is worth three because there's the one and the two here. So three marks in total. And then four, I don't know if you remember that one. Gross pay, remember is gross is after, it's, it's not, it's not, the deductions haven't been taken off yet. So we're not doing net pay here, just gross pay. For net pay, you'd need the charts. So make sure you have that handy, that the tables that I gave you, because down the road, they'll ask you to review and then you need that, okay? The booklet with all those numbers. 
So uh, Jim gets paid time and a uh, time and a half. I don't know if you recall that, but time and a half is 1.5, right? It's getting it's getting paid time and a half. Okay, so that should ring a bell. Put it on your study sheet if you don't. Uh, so if you work anything past 40 hours per week, you get paid time and a half for that those hours. So the wage is 15.60 an hour and you work 45 hours, calculate the gross pay. So regular, obviously you did work 40 hours regular. So 40 times 1560 is that. So you get one mark for having the 624 show up. Then you have for overtime, you worked five hours past the 40 and you were not just making 1560, you were making 1560 times 1 1.5. That's why I show that work here. The 1.5 has to show up here somewhere. Sorry. And then, uh, and then I just show this line down here because you're technically making 2340 while working overtime. That's what you're making. So if your boss says, hey, you're working overtime and you're getting paid time and a half, just take your wage, times it by 1.5. You know how much you're making per hour while working overtime. So it's five times 2340, it's this. So you get another mark for coming up with a 117. And then one more mark for adding them up and actually coming up with the total gross pay. If you don't have anything for overtime, on your study sheet this would probably be a good one to to have just an example right there boom right so this is i will just make sure this is your overtime wage per hour okay um so that would be a good one to have on your study sheet if you're if you weren't sure what to do here now's the time to put it down okay Okay, so uh, this, so far, this page is 